It's July tw July 25th. Hold on, I want to record that bird song. Okay, July 25th, 2022. I'm at Mohawk Lake in Savannah, Georgia. I'm back where the path curves in on itself. And so other people can find it. There's a little planted maple there, there, and there. I'm straight across from the third one. Over here, if I can get it to focus, there's a telephone pole going up. Right in front of it here is a young black cherry tree. And back here, with the craggly bark, is a common persimmon tree. And I have a plant marker, a wooden plant marker stuck in the ground here to mark it. This, this is a female tree, common persimmons come in both male and female. So the male ones only produce, ha, produce flowers that only produce pollen and female trees produce flowers that will form fruit after they get pollen from a male tree. I've got another wooden marker there in front of the tree. I think this is, I think both of these trunks are from the same plant, but I don't know for sure. But. You can walk in here if you're careful. Still relatively young tree. It's probably like a decade old or something, but not ancient. And then if you look up here, all the little dark circles are fruit that's forming. Let's see if I can zoom in. Yeah. Not very well, but there is a fruit right there, that little dark spot. Yeah, it's not gonna let me zoom. But the fruit should start falling and ripening soon. I'm not sure how long it takes. I didn't actually pay attention to the specific date last year when we started finding it on the ground. These are a separate species from the persimmons you find in the store. Those ones are domesticated ones, usually from Asia. This tree is native to North America. It, shared a com it shares a common ancestor with the ones we sell in grocery stores, but this one, as far as I know, just hasn't been domesticated. But you can eat the fruit. You just have to wait until it's fully ripe to eat it. This is one that, oh, well, okay, I dropped it. All right, well. This is the little cap you can find on top of persimmons. There's four petal-like things that's attached to the top of the fruit. It just came off this one because it's not, it's rotted. But this is one that either fell off earlier or managed to survive the winter, I'm not sure. This one's really small. But these persimmons will be smaller than the ones you get in the grocery store because this is a wild plant. It's not domesticated, it hasn't been bred for size, but you can eat them as long as they're fully ripe. And you can plant, oh look, another one. You get good at finding them. <laughs> Let's hope there's no ants in here. Here's another one. If I can pick it up. Here's an, oh it's a li really little one. So I'm guessing there was something wrong with this fruit that it fell off early. But that's They'll be bigger than that. <laughs> but you can, yeah, you can eat the fruit and you can save the seeds and grow your own. If you want to grow your own, you just have to plant the seeds outside somewhere in winter so that they'll get cold stratified the way they would if they were left out here by themselves. And then they should start coming up in the spring or late spring. Oh, look, I just found a seed next to this piece of freaking glass. That's glass. Here's a persimmon seed. Oh, look, it's hollow, so I might have sprouted. But this is what the persimmon seeds look like. They're large and flat. They should be a warm brown color. This one's like dark gray because it's dead. But, yeah, like I said, I'm at Mohawk Lake, back where the path turns in on itself, across from the third little planted maple tree. Uh, with the, if in doubt, Look for the telephone pole and then the wooden markers. I 
can't guarantee the markers will be here forever because somebody else will probably move them at some point. But there's that main tree that produces fruit for sure. And then back there, there's two trunks there and then there's one further back. Those are also persimmon trees. I'm not sure if they produce fruit. They might all be male trees, which would explain why this tree here is so successful if it's getting pollen from not even 10 feet away. I don't know if the slope of the hill shows up on the camera, but those ones are a lot harder for me to get back to because it's on a steep little hill. So like I could probably go back up there, but I don't know what's up there, so I don't feel like stepping on a snake or something. Obviously, make sure you're being careful if you're walking around in the summer. Um, I don't think I can zoom in on these ones, the phone camera. But I will be taking pictures of them with my actual camera and pictures of all of these plants as well as the map markers on satellite view will be added to iNaturalist. Actually, no, I, ca I can see some fruit on those little branches right there. It will not show up on the phone though, so when I post this video to YouTube, I'll add links to the observations for each of them so you can see the photos of that fruit because I don't think this one had fruit on it last year, but it definitely does right now. And it's got a ton of it, so that's really cool. Uh, this tree's, I just forgot the scientific name. I can never remember how to pronounce it either, so that doesn't help. But anyways, if you live in Georgia or another nearby state, keep an eye out for common persimmon trees. That's what they're called on um, iNaturalist, so that's what I call them. But yep, right there. And then back there, there's two trunks and then another one further back. Yeah, edible fruit, it's a native plant. Let's see if I can zoom in up here. Yeah, you can see the dark little circles up there, that's the fruit. People love it, deer eat the fruit. I think foxes might. I know, I know grizzly bears and other bears love the fruit because I keep seeing on iNaturalist. So, yeah, keep an eye out for this because it's really fun and you can grow your own.